Welcome back to Status Detail, and today we have a GT3 Touring in for a awesome detail. It is unbelievably dirty. It was sitting in the port for a really long time. I can already tell this one is like close to using the word disaster, uh, but I guarantee we can fix all of it. So without further ado, let's jump directly into that wash. A really fast shout out to one of my customers, Carol. You are super awesome. You not only referred this customer to me with this GT3 Touring, but you also trailered the car here with your personal trailer and personal pickup truck to get it here to help us logistically. Status detail customers are super, super awesome and they're always willing to kind of go the extra mile and help me and to help Status Detail uh, do things and that's super, super awesome. This is how the car showed up to me and it was pretty rough. So this basically is what a car looks like when you decline the dealership to do anything and this particular car sat in the port for a really long time. So we have our work cut out for us in the wash section, but like any other detail we have ever done on this YouTube channel, we start with the wheels first. But uh, the fast version for anyone new to the channel is we like to use PNS Brake Buster, which is the purple stuff in the spray bottle there. I want that purple. Stuff. It's really, really good at cleaning wheels. This does have steel brakes, so it did have a little bit of dust on the wheels, but it also has 71 miles on the odometer, so not a whole lot of driving has happened yet, and it was trailered to us, like I previously mentioned, so the wheels were not very dirty. It's very rare to see something this bad. This is delivery wrap glue from the door. I suppose typically the dealership will remove this stuff before we see it, but he asked them specifically, like, don't touch my car pull the wrappers off and that's it. And this is what I ended up receiving here. So we use Gian Tar, which is actually a really great adhesive remover. And as you can see, this is sped up, but I spray Gian Tar on there and then I let it sit for a while. I actually resprayed it once or twice, but I don't show that on camera. And then I literally pressure washed all of the gunk and, and residue and adhesive off of the car. I literally didn't scrub it. I didn't do anything crazy or special to it. Um, we also had to do that on multiple spots, like on the roof and a couple other spots where there was just a lot, a lot of adhesive residue. Um, but the, that door spot was far and behind one of the worst I've ever seen and was the worst on this particular car. Now, for the rest of the car, we just needed to really do a real hardcore rinse. The car had so much dirt on it that it was kind of almost comical. The dirt is everywhere. It's like in the seals between like the paintwork and the windows like the rubber seals are brown and they're supposed to be like brand new black and they literally are like caked with dirt brown. After we do the tar step to get off most of the adhesive, I actually go back around the car and I did foam the entire thing to basically just get our first wash in, but we do multiple foam washes and just hand washes during this process because that's how dirty this car actually was. I don't typically show this because not every car needs it, but this car needed it really badly. We had to clay bar this car and you have to remember guys, clay bar, is only used when basically you rub your hand over the car, over the paint, and you feel like grit, like sandpaper grit in the paint. And the clay, for some reason, whatever it is, it goes in there and it just like sucks that grit out of the, out of the paint and it goes into the clay. And it is the absolute most effective way to remove all that stuff. Now, when you're done doing that, you have to wash the car again, uh, especially because we have more steps to do. So we ended up actually rinsing the car off we shot iron x all over it and then you're seeing what we're seeing now which is then we're foaming the car again and this is the final um third and final uh foam and hand wash of the entire car this is basically to get us to square one which is like a clean car and we have now done all of our decontamination steps gian quick detailer is being used here this is a polymer based spray wax essentially it's a flat black car i'm just doing everything i can to make sure i don't scratch this thing any extra while i'm drying it I come to find out soon enough that it wouldn't have matter what I had done. The paint is so swirled out and so many standing marks that I couldn't have done any damage, but good practices are good practices. This is a great way to dry a car, especially if you're going to paint correct it because I wouldn't want to use any ceramic based detailers. That's just a waste of time in my opinion. After any wash, your rotors, especially steel rotors are going to rust over like this. And basically we're going to take a quick spin around the block to just stomp on the brakes and that's going to fix the problem. <laughs> So real quick, we just need to get all that brake dust off, or the, we just need to get all that rust off the uh, calipers and rotors. So we're gonna just stop on the brakes real quick. And that basically does it. If we don't do that, then you end up picking your car up and you have all of that stuff on your rotors. And when you drive away and hit the brakes, it like plumes out, goes all in your, you know, your rim and it like coats it in this like orange rusty color. 
Uh, otherwise, if I do it now, it kind of comes off and then I can go back over and clean it so when you pick your car up, you don't have to deal with that. One of the number one reasons to come to status detail is to get your paint dialed into perfection and this car started out about as rough as a car can start. So this thing has swirl marks everywhere. It has crazy ridiculous uh, delivery wrap marks where there's delivery wrap and then there's nothing and you can see the difference in the paint. Um, just swirl marks are everywhere, man, and it was so bad. Flat black is going to show it more than the average car. If this was white, you might not see it quite as bad. Uh, the car had multiple sanding marks all over it. So you can see the PPF on the hips here, and then when we get to the top of that hip, oh man, that is one of the largest sanding marks I think I've ever seen on a car. It goes into the delivery wrap on the top. If you look at the line where the delivery wrap was, the sanding mark is like into that, which I don't even understand how that happens, to be honest. And then that whole part of that panel, I mean, oh, that is really, really bad, guys, for a car with 71 miles on it. So we have some custom PPF uh, later on in the video. We're, we're gonna do the hips again and basically get more full protection. We'll talk about that later in the video. The 992 has really wide hips on the Tourings, on the Turbo S's, all of the models, they all have wide hips and they get rock chips like crazy in this area. So we're pulling off the factory PPF because we're gonna do a, a full custom piece here that's gonna fully protect that whole area and it's just gonna give better protection. Uh, so we do have to pull off this factory stuff and when we do pull off the factory stuff, we have a little bit of a surprise where that bad side was with the sanding mark because it turns out the sanding mark was actually below the factory PPF and you can see that line where the factory PPF was and then we've got a sanding mark all the way down and then it goes you know, below that. So it was in the delivery wrap and it was below the factory PPF. And this just shows you kind of, I don't know any other word other than careless. It just shows you kind of how careless the manufacturer can be when they're putting together and you know, kind of perfecting these cars or what they might call perfecting these cars because you can't have a sanding mark that bad guys and then put factory PPF over it and just act like that's okay. That, that's pretty bad. Uh, I'm glad that in this case we did opt to pull the factory PPF off because I was able to actually fix that entire sanding mark. And uh, here are just some shots of the car after it was paint corrected. And obviously, you know, I specialize in paint correction guys. So whether you have a Porsche or any other car or bl black paint or soft paint or whatever it is, I'm gonna get you back to perfect no matter what. And this car was no different. That hip did cause quite a lot of problems though. It was, it was pretty hard to fix that. I had to do that multiple, multiple times to get it, but eventually we did get it back to perfect as you can see here. Dust is one of the worst things ever when you're doing PPF on a car. So when I'm done paint correcting the car and the car is perfect, this is what I'm left with. I have thousands of pieces of dust. You can see dust on the panel itself, but also look at all that dust crammed into the jams between those two panels. That stuff, guys, one speck of that dust can ruin an entire PPF job. And there is thousands of pieces of dust everywhere on the car. So I have to meticulously clean the entire car again when I'm done doing the paint correction so I can get back to perfect where the paint is perfect, but there's also no dust. Otherwise doing your PPF will be a absolute nightmare. How you do anything is how you do everything. And that's a big deal with PPF. I do my very, very best to keep this room clean all the time. And it was one of the biggest factors of why I did tile floor. When you do epoxy, it's very slippery unless you put like grit in it. And when you put that grit in it, it becomes very, very complicated to clean the floor. Once everything's done, I'll actually clean the floors in here and we'll have like a clean environment, clean room, and we're good to go on the PPF. And that makes a major, major difference when you're doing window tint or when you're doing PPF. Once we do get the car back to perfect, we can begin the PPF process. Uh, here are my guys doing some S-Tech Dino Shield PPF installation and these guys are so fantastic and they've taught me so much so I'm actually doing uh, a lot of the work myself now. I actually did the custom hips and the custom rocker panels uh, by myself. I also did some custom stuff on the back bumper, all of which turned out fantastic. Uh, but these guys I trusted more to do the front end. If you're new to the paint protection film world, we're basically spraying uh, baby, baby shampoo uh, on the back of that. It's diluted into water. We use distilled water, so we don't use like hose water or faucet water. And then we're peeling off the cap sheet here. So that's actually a protective layer for the top of the PPF, which basically ensures there's no defects in the film. Not a lot of people use that and not a lot of manufacturers even offer that. Um, I think I'm a huge believer in it and so are our, our installers. We all think it's fantastic and it really helps actually lay the material down. And then that's why we peel it off while it's on the car. The hood of this thing is pretty complicated, mainly because of those two like nostril vents in the front. The, both the fenders are pretty complicated because of the way they are shaped and the way the headlights are. So we have to do some interesting relief cuts around the headlight. And then, you know, we have to cut out the emblem, which is hard, but it's actually really easy when you are a uh, professional like our installers are. A custom piece on the hip, so we remove the OEM hip. 
And you can see we've got a line across here, which is similar to the way they have a line across at OEM, but we have way better coverage now. So this wraps all the way into the door jam, so you can't see a seam there. And then there's a seam basically right here. And then we just wrap that entire lower rocker, and then it comes to a seam. We have a seam here on purpose. If I had run the whole thing one piece, we would have a freaking crazy expensive piece of PPF. So we seamed this, made the cost way lower for the customer. Now, if you want to replace the left side, it's inexpensive. If you want to replace the right side, it's inexpensive. If we do a full piece, then he's invested into like a really, really expensive piece of one piece PPF. We've got a custom piece of PPF here. So it follows this body line just to protect this. In our experience, you don't get a lot over here on a GT3 or a Turbo S. You're getting it right here. This has literally just been finished. That's why it's still wet. There's a lot of heating and curing to do here. But I literally wrapped the line into right where my fingernail is. Like it's literally all the way across here. And this will look even better when it's all fully dried and I have to do the heat gun on it and heat it and everything. But you can't really see this. So this whole ridge here all the way down, all this, this all is film. Um, I made sure to do that this way on the driver's side because if he gets into the car and he kicks this, then, you know, this door sill doesn't get beat up. I believe I made an Instagram story or an Instagram reel about what you're seeing right now where I'm cleaning the inside of the leather. And this is a standard practice, even on a brand new car, we still do this, but we especially do it when, when you're doing our driver's package because driver's package includes leather ceramic and it's you know an, an appropriate, proper process to clean the leather, use uh, like an alcohol-based wipe after that, which is gonna be either Gian Prep or interior detailer from Gian. Then we apply the ceramic coating for the leather on the inside. It just bonds better and it's just, a, you know, you wanna work clean and that's, that's working clean and working correctly as well. So it was interesting because when the customer picked his car up, he was like, oh wow, you really like, you clean the inside. Like a lot of people are surprised by that because they're like, hey, the car is brand new. I treat your cars like I treat my cars. If I just bought a $300,000 brand new car, it came from the factory, I would do a light interior cleaning of the leather, especially the high touch areas. Because you guys have to remember, people in the factory touched your car all over the place. Then the guy who moved the car off the trailer when it came to the dealership, and when it was moved in and out of the port, all of these people touched the inside of your car. Then the dealership people and the delivery, like the, you know, the, the porters, then they touched your car. Then a salesperson probably drove it out and got it ready for you, then he was in your car. That's a lot of people inside of your brand new car with 50 miles on it that's $300,000, or even if it's $50,000. So yeah, you bet your butt that even if this was me with my brand new car, I'm going to clean the inside of my car when I get it. And that just makes sense to me, just to make sure that you, now when you, the customer, get into your car, your car has 70 miles on it and it's clean, it's fresh, it's perfect, and like you're now basically the first one touching it after it's like completely clean transformation inside and out. And that's exactly how I would treat my car, and that's exactly how I'm going to treat yours. You can see the leather coating going on here. We use a G-Technic leather coating. And this is also available in our store. It's called L1 Leather Guard. You can buy this. You can put it on yourself at home. It's pretty easy to put on. There are coatings out there that are stronger than this for your leather, but those will change the appearance of your leather and they will also change the way it feels and just like it looks, which is appearance, right? So this does not change the look. It does not change the feel. And for those two purposes alone, that is why we use it. So this needs to be applied more often than some of the other coatings on the market. But this is our preference simply because I don't want to change the look or the feel of your, of your leather, especially when you have an exclusive manufacturer interior that's really special like this car. We don't want to change the way it's supposed to look or the way it's supposed to feel. One of the cool things that this coating does though is actually kind of fortifies the leather in a way. So it actually gives friction resistance, which means like when you jump over the bolster, it actually is slightly resistant to wear and tear of like losing the leather grain. Now, obviously it's not going to stop it forever and you have to reapply it relatively often to keep that going, but it is a real attribute of the ceramic coating. On top of that, and the main reason that we like to use it is it helps stop dye transfer. Um, so like if you wear blue jeans all the time and you have a white leather interior, or, or, or an interior like this color, it will actually make the dye transfer not happen as much. 
and when it does happen it is very easy to clean because the third and mostly final uh, main attribute of uh, ceramic coated leather is that it's easier to clean. So if you spill something on it, it's easier to clean. If you have dye transfer, it's easier to clean. In general, stains and things like that don't really stick to it as well. They will still stick, right? Nothing's, nothing's perfect, but it makes it easier to clean. That's why we always say ceramic on the inside, the outside, the wheels, whatever you're doing, guys, none of it's like, you know, crazy uh, witchcraft stuff that like lasts forever and doesn't need any maintenance. All things, including ceramic, need maintenance, but typically your maintenance is easier, faster, and gives you a better result, you just, but you have to keep up with the maintenance. So on a beautiful interior like this, we will probably do one to two times a year a really nice interior cleaning and get it back to this, but it's easier to get it back to this with the ceramic on the inside, and that's the main reason that we use it.